Hi guys and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name's Dr. Maddie, your doctor from the UK, and today we're watching one of my favourite anime shows, Mob Psycho 100. Now, I've got to be honest, the first time I watched this show, I was a bit put off by the fact that it was so psychedelic and colourful. However, after I got into it, I realised there was a perfect balance of comedy, action and character development. And you know what? There was plenty of science in there too. And that's why I've chosen it for today's breakdown. Today we'll be looking at the power of mental strength, the impact our emotions have on our physical performance, and lastly, the dangers of EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! So, if you're ready, let's begin. And to start off with, I have to give some appreciation to the awesome fight scene cinematography. I think it's pretty amazing where we've gone from manga scenes like this all the way through to action scenes like this on the screen. You appreciate better why it takes animation studios to translate manga like this all the way through into a whole season's worth of anime. But also, the story of Mob is something that many people can identify with. I mean, he's just an average scrawny kid half of the time, and it's actually his mental strength and emotions that are his great strength. Unlike in other anime shows where it relies upon an OP character's brute strength or powers, Mob Psycho is different. He's vulnerable and weak most of the time until he's not, and typically he's only ever pushed over the edge when there's someone that he cares about who comes in harm's way. And this brings us to the theme of today's video, where we're going to be looking at the power of our mind and our emotions over our body, and looking at whether it can enhance our physical performance. <laughs> And as I was saying just earlier, Mob is typically triggered when it's someone that he cares about who comes into harm's way. And it's only really when he's feeling overwhelming emotions that he's truly able to access his full psychic abilities. But why is it that we feel strong when we're angry, but we can hardly stand when we're laughing really hard? Well, emotions are related to the motion in their name, and each emotion is associated with an action tendency. For example, with anger, there is a powerful impulse to counter-attack if we feel an offence has been performed against us. We go into a fight-or-flight mode where our body releases adrenaline, getting us ready for a retaliation or an attack. On the other hand, when we're laughing, our body does the opposite. It releases happy chemicals, otherwise known as endorphins. And what these do is they interact with a pathway called the H reflex, which is a neurological pathway that's involved in muscle contraction. And it's been found that this H reflex disappears when we're laughing out loud, which could account for why we feel limp and weak when laughing. <laughs> And I like this idea of powering up. It's a bit like what we would have seen in other old anime shows like Dragon Ball Z. But does this powering up help in any way? Well, yes, because motion and action requires energy. When we feel angry, this channels our resources into preparing for an assault on the focus of our anger. And it does this through increasing our physiological activation by increasing our heart rate, breathing rate, our blood pressure, as well as narrowing our cognitive attention and focus on our opponents. And so without emotional connection to the task at hand, we don't perform at our best. <laughs> The problem here with Mob is that he's internally conflicted. He doesn't like and doesn't want to harm others. And this stems back to an early childhood experience where Mob did lose control and was left shocked with the result of his actions. And it's known that the tendency to suppress the expression of anger, otherwise known as bottling up, can inhibit the potential strength induced by angry feelings. And what I mean by this is the psychophysiological resources that go behind the emotion of anger can in fact make our punches and kicks stronger. Across multiple studies, it was observed that anger can actually increase the strength of a kick, 
by up to 20%. And this was compared to the same individuals when they delivered a kick in a calm state. So what this means is emotional engagement does increase our physical strength, but it doesn't necessarily translate to an improved physical performance when you consider factors like being in a blind rage. <laughs> And again, what we're seeing here is that Mob's defensive barrier isn't enough to prevent him taking a beating. And this is likely due to the lack of cognitive focusing on the one emotion to defeat his opponent. On the one hand, Mob is trying to defend his brother, and on the other, he's actually defending his opponent, should he release his raw strength. You could say that Mob's barrier being weak is in fact a metaphor for his internal conflict. And this relates to my earlier point. You might be the strongest person in the room, but if you're unable to focus that, you're not able to maximize your potential. So clearly, Mob is losing here, but why? We've seen his potential when he's been at his all-powerful self. Well, if you've seen the series, you'll know it's all down to self-doubt and self-judgment. Let's take the example of a baby. Now, believe it or not, but babies actually function at the level of a genius up until the age of one. When you think about their mental and physical growth in their first year of life, it's actually pretty amazing. They learn that they have 10 fingers and 10 toes, and they learn to utilize those as tools. They learn to communicate through language, and they go from being a couch potato through to a mobile toddler. But what is the the cause for this slowdown in cognitive function from there on? Well, researchers postulated that it's down to the learned behaviours of self-doubt and self-judgment. And this is often imposed on us by meaningful loved ones who tell us things like, you can't be a firefighter because it's too dangerous, or you can't be a doctor because you're not smart enough. Really, it's no wonder that our sense of wonder and invincibility evaporates from this age onwards. And later on in life, we can develop our own internal voices that tell us either we're not good enough, we're not strong enough, or we're incapable of doing the things that we dream of. And I really love this scene, just the brutality of it. You really feel for Mob, but at the same time, you know it's gonna pay off with an awesome transformation. It really reminds me of the old Dragon Ball Z days where you used to have Gohan's internal monologues just before he would transform. <laughs> And here we see an outburst from Mob's brother, but he's just not as powerful as Mob, or not yet. And that difference in power might stem from their motivations, with both Mob and his brother being motivated by two different things. Mob isn't motivated by wanting to be the strongest, the most popular, or the best at anything. His motivations are to care and protect for those that he cares about, and there clearly aren't any lengths that Mob wouldn't go to to achieve this which makes his motivations almost limitless. Whereas his brother, on the other hand, is motivated by things like status or being the most popular, which are objectively achievable. Once satisfied, what stimulus is there left to motivate him to grow? And what I'm trying to say here is the motivations behind our emotions is really important, because it's this that fuels us and drives us and stops us from giving up. Oh god, okay, he's pushed Mob over the edge. And I love the way they depicted it as though his emotions are ticking down to 100%. It's like in all other anime where they reach their release point or when they've had enough. And it's funny because sometimes I feel like that. You know, you start your day with a certain level of tolerance for stupidity, but by the end of the day, if someone does something simple, you just flip.
Yes, so animosity basically means strong hostility, and you can see how Mob's complexion changes completely once he's reached 100%. And this raises a really interesting point. Are there early warning signs in people's body language to know that you've angered them, and what are the signs you should look out for to know when to get out of there? So some common warning signs to look out for in people's body language includes a clenched jaw, intense eye contact, furrowed brows, and reddened skin. If you see any of these, you might want to get out of there. And it's funny, I knew I wouldn't be able to complete this video without touching on whether there's any truth to any of Mob's psychic abilities. So let's have a look at them. Now you're going to have to be patient here whilst I entertain the possibilities of these being real. And I'm by no means trying to say that any of these are possible in the way they're depicted in this anime, but let me try to convince you how some of them might be possible. And starting with energy transference. Now, believe it or not, but we come across this as doctors in our daily practice. But rather than calling it energy transference, we call it counter transference. And this is the ability of some of our patients, particularly those who are desperate and depressed, of making us feel very similar by the end of the consultation. It's actually something we're warned about when being empathetic with our patients, and it's something that we have to actively resist to prevent it from impacting our other patients. So I guess that kind of ties in with mind control resistance as well. Next up, we've got energy absorption. Again, this one isn't exactly absorbing people's energy, but have you ever listened to an inspirational speech? Or do you have a friend who's often so energised that their energy is in fact infectious and makes you motivated to want to go out and do something as well? Well, that's a bit like energy absorption because you're using their energy to get you up and moving. Next up, we've got astral projection. And I guess this could some way be linked to people's experiences of things like sleep paralysis. Often people describe having an out-of-body experience, with some people actually reporting that they see themselves hovering above their body when going to sleep. Chlorokinesis? I'm not really sure what that even is. Spiritual awareness. Now, if that's actually meaning that you have an awareness of ghosts and spirits around you, then unfortunately I can't explain that one either. And lastly, we have telekinesis. Now, up until now, there is no evidence that has been captured, recorded, and certified to corroborate whether telekinesis exists. Unless through this screen, I can get you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. But in all seriousness, it goes against established physics, which states that brain waves aren't strong enough to control things outside of your skull. The only things that can do that are gravitational and magnetic forces. Probably the closest thing that science can explain is how thoughts can control a robotic arm. It's been shown in stroke patients who are unable to move. Researchers are able to connect probes to the part of the brain that controls movements. Now these patients can train to concentrate on moving the robotic arm, which acts as an extension of their mind and thoughts. And although it's close and unbelievable, it's not telekinesis. And so here we see Mob accessing his full psychic abilities. His overwhelming feelings and emotions towards caring for his brother have silenced those previous thoughts of self-doubt and self-judgment. And if any of you are wondering just how strong Mob is, he's just pushed this guy's head through a brick wall. And after doing some simple mathematics, we can calculate that the force needed to do this is up to 63,000 newtons. Now comparing that to an elite boxer, they're able to generate about a tenth of that, and seemingly Mob is able to do that with ease. And now we can see that Mob is up there with some of the most overpowered characters in anime. And he's only really been able to do this by breaking out of his own psychological shackles. But what can you do to help break out of low confidence and self-doubt? Well, here's a few tips 
from your doctor? Well, for starters, live in the present. Most of the time, feelings of self-doubt are attached to memories of times in the past when you fail to achieve something or somebody else told you that you were not good enough. Don't dwell on those moments. Two, learn to trust yourself. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. If you tell yourself that you can't do something, then you probably won't even try it in the first place. Have faith in yourself. Tell yourself that you're just as capable as the next person of achieving your dreams and stop listening to the voice inside that keeps saying, I can't. Next up, counter the negative. At times, it might seem as though the negative voices in your head are stronger than the positive ones. Try to be aware of this when it happens and make a concerted effort to counter these negative thoughts with positive energy. And finally, spend time with others. Family and friends are an invaluable source of strength, reassurance and encouragement. In fact, studies suggest that people who have strong social support have lower levels of cortisol, otherwise known as the stress hormone, when compared to people with fewer friends. Even strangers can be surprisingly positive and helpful when it comes to self-doubt. And again, I have to compliment how amazing the animation is in this show. You can really see the influence it had on other anime shows that followed this. And I hope this video has built the hype for season three that's coming very soon. Okay, that's it for today. Season 3 of Mob Psycho 100 is coming out later on this year, but let us know down below if there are any other shows that you're looking forward to. But otherwise, in the meantime, maybe one of these two videos can keep you entertained. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.